got a walk-in freezer here we just got to and they said it hadn't ran uh, all morning uh, they got some ice cream and stuff in here and it's soft big time even the yeah, french fries are getting there it appears to me we've like failed into defrost of some sort you can see the water and stuff uh, that had accumulated from previous defrost the back of the coil here hard to say can't see of course we've got everything piled underneath of it as usual now they do have a door switch and i can hear a click going on which kind of makes me think it's the solenoid kind of hard to tell from right here i'm not hearing any refrigerant moving uh, we'll have to make sure that door's shut because i think when i got here it was barely all the way shut wow somebody actually uses their old thinker muscle check that out that's unusual amazing all right so we found the panel and those are the numbers that they had well, that's not there they moved it somewhere now any mi 25 27 29 is there a panel called nemi nemi not real sure now for them to have moved that they would have had to pull a new wire or change something you would figure maybe that conduit there look at that me me one see you just got to use your thingamanogger there we go well, it's a kitchen cooler now it's a freezer 25 27 29 25 27 29 it's not off and it seems to be engaged so good just for giggles kick her off and back on all right we got it so we can get in to the building now because it's uh got to be kept secured of course nothing like a little ice and let's see if we can find this thing don't know if that's the little lone ranger there or if that is over there that looks more like a cooler over there it's kind of small no label hmm shut off as soon as i pulled the knob there all right let's see if we can dig into this thing pretty sure this is it because i don't know too many people it's got my marker and that sure looks like my marker saying it's r22 and that it is an r22 txv so this definitely was me it's been a while since i've been here i can't remember i thought it was low on charge back then or something i don't remember that's not tripped yeah it, uh Look at injection, and it's coming in through that solenoid there. I would reckon that we've got an issue with the low pressure switch cutting out. Welcome to the wiry mess. Okay. So we do have a headmaster control there. Defrost heater contactor. That almost looks like my writing. I love it when people do stupid crap like this. Here's the problem with trying to be energy efficient like people are trying to do here see what they've done is they have decided to make the defrost only during you know working hours problem is clock gets out of whack next thing you know you're doing defrost in the middle of the rush hour instead of whatever and you're better off being equal I, I think it's just not a good idea in my personal opinion I'm at 1142 right now and it looks like we're at about 1230 so we're doggone close so it might be tracking 50 minute defrost seems like an awfully long time hard to say whether it's got defrost termination down there or not looks like fuses have been an issue in the past because we've got multiple different fuses here let's check that puppy there 15 amp let's see if it's any good all right we are good on the fuse 
checked voltage. We've got voltage on L1 and N. So we got 200 and some volts on that. Check an amp draw on one, nothing on that one. We have another leg there we can jump and check. Uh, power's coming out on four, which we ain't got nothing on that. Let's go ahead and rotate. No. Oh. Gone again. Let's see if we can put this thing to defrost. There, kicked in there. Defrost heater down here does not look like it kicked on yet. Let's see if this thing will pump down. I think we are pulling now in on our defrost heater. Six amps. Six amps. Six amps. So it is going into a defrost, which is interesting. Let's, for giggles, watch and see if this thing is actually tracking time, because I have a feeling it may not be. But that don't explain why the fans weren't running. We need to get that melted off, which we're not gonna probably get everything we need melted anyway, but let's see what we can do here. Well, it's been just a little bit, and you can see there the blue mark has moved, so we're tracking time. We're still pulling six amps on that defrost heater. I have a feeling we've got maybe a refrigeration issue. It's not coming up high enough pressure to make the compressor run. Still doesn't really explain why the coil might be froze yet unless it's just not running long enough and short cycling. I'm not sure yet on that part. But I can explain why it's warm, but far as frost up, unless it's just got long freaking uh, defrost in between type deal, that's yeah, kind of hard to say. We're gonna watch this thing for a while. I'm gonna go downstairs and see, make sure it's starting to melt, see what kind of melting it actually is doing. We'll. Uh, definitely get a gauge on that suction side. Today is one of the coldest days so far this year. One of the problems you get, these low pressure switches get out of whack when they get, you know, 20 years old. They just don't come on like they should. Originally it looks like the cut in was 15 and cut out was zero. Temp controlled by stat and walk in unit. 2D frost, 4 a.m. and 4 p.m. 50 minutes, fail safe. So that means it must have a termination switch and look at that. Unit started July of 94, so about two months after I graduated high school. Lovely. Yep, it's just like brand new. Now while we're up here, we can get a good view on that sight glass there on the oil. You can see, we'll give it the wiggle. And you should be able to see the oil wiggling there. Okay, so we're back down here and I can hear it ticking. From this side, it looks like we've completely de-iced and it really hasn't been that long. What that's telling me, being I push, push, push button over here, push, push the button. So I push the button over there and it doesn't click. So obviously it was trying to run and the fans weren't running. So it just dropped in pressure like it will when the fans ain't running. It caused it to freeze up because the fans never came on. I think we got us a bad fan time delay. Uh, it's probably a fan time delay slash termination switch. And bands that melted it right off, I don't think it's such a defrost issue as much as it is a fan delay issue. Chances are we've got fan uh, switch that's not working correctly. I'm going to see if we can climb up there and uh, get to it. I about guarantee that's what's going on. All right, so we've got our defrost time delay here. You can see it right there is where it's at. Come up to here. Right there it is. It's located right on that right there. You can see, and that's kind of scary. I don't want to wiggle it too much because I'll get it short. But you can see right there, there is a wire that is going to short out if I wiggle it too much. And that's not a good idea, you know? So we're going to be definitely changing that. That comes over here to X. Also comes down and goes to M. And blue comes down here to N. So we're going to go ahead and get that replaced for sure. We can unplug it from down here without having to go up on the uh, roof to do it, but definitely it's failing. The one I've got is not going to mount there, but I'm gonna go ahead and mount it uh, probably to the sheet metal and uh, we should be good. There really is no other good place to mount it at, but it appears to me what we got is a defrost fan delay, time delay, it's both things are kind of jacked. Uh, the purpose of that right there is to terminate the defrost when it's finished so that it doesn't go the full 50 minutes. 
also is to wait until it gets below usually about 32 degrees before it brings on the fans. Obviously the fans weren't coming on, which is why it was all froze up. If you look at the back, we're perfectly clean and clear. Actually in really good shape. This right here looks like it's a 94 also. All right, so I've got a new one here. I got today's date on it. We're good to go. Just gotta go in here and put this thing on real quick. This one here is pretty universal, but this is what they, uh, we use on most of our bones as it is. Or opens at 55 and closes at 35. So there we go, let's get in here and get this going. I've got it mounted real tight, right up against the metal. The other one was mounted up there. Since we're off to the side, you're gonna lose a little bit of sensing. So I mounted it one down lower. That's as low as I can go without, you know, hitting something. I use really short self-tapping Phillips screws. That way it doesn't go into a coil, which there is no coils on this other side. There's no heater element. You can see the screws. If I can get it to focus, there's one screw head and there's the other. You can't quite get it, but you'd be hearing hissing if not. I unplugged one at a time, so now we just gotta get these back on there. I've got it on there, and as soon as I got everything hooked up, which I do not recommend doing this live like I did, but I was very, very careful to make sure that my leads did not touch anything. You can hear the refrigerant screaming through this thing, which those lines are hot. And now there we go, they're really cold here. Not as cold over here by the heaters, but it's definitely getting cold pretty quick. Yeah, and that's gonna transfer that cold onto that plate. So it's gonna come down. It obviously terminated that uh, heater and uh, it should kick on here in a minute. But like I said, that uh, right here is definitely, definitely an issue. You're in, which is your common wire going and switching between uh, the fan or it's gonna switch to X to terminate. X is your terminate. Click. So drop on temperature, closes, black closes, goes to M, which is motor, fans. And when it gets too warm, it rises, closes, hits X. With that black wire being your problem wire there, like I say, and you can see, that's that's not a good sign. So we definitely uh, are on the right roll here. Uh, the way I hear that refrigerant flying through there really nice and quick right now you can uh, definitely see the cold coming out of it the heater elements I believe they feel hot still just in case we do have to switch it back to the other type of control I'm leaving this in there but we're gonna go up there on the uh, roof and make sure everything's disconnected as far as and disengage the uh, contact heaters which it has to because it has an interlock just make sure all these wires aren't touching on the heater elements like a couple of them are about ready to so we'll get a couple of those fixed up there with a couple wire ties and then uh, let's get up on the roof i've heard it kick on a couple times while i was down there on and off on and off it's still in freaking defrost so it didn't even terminate like it was supposed to that's nice so the termination don't work right. That's probably not wired right. And you can see this total flipping mess here. Unless I don't have it wired right down there. There, we kicked it out of defrost. Let's see how it runs. Let's check our uh, termination switch. See if we got power on that. See if we got power on X and N. All right, so we're just gonna ignore the fact that it doesn't terminate like it should. Following this wiring is a mess. It didn't want to come on. It is now. I wanted to check this, but I didn't get down here quick enough. The pressure switch just barely makes. It shuts off about negative one and comes up to two. The fouls don't hold well on this, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is no surprise, but we just came on. Let's see how things go here. May have to give it a little bit of refrigerant. Definitely have issues when it's cold like this. But it may fill up here in a second. Yeah, it's not really bypassing much. You can feel the hot, hot gas coming through here, but it's not really bypassing much there. We just got a full sight glass now. They know this thing needs replaced. It's on R22. It's been babied along forever. But unfortunately, no one wants to update things proactively. I got to do some more investigating here on electrical. I don't you can see what we've got here. It's been 
hodgepodge and everything else. It's just a total flipping mess. Look, we're pumping down, looks like. See that? We found a zero PSI on the suction. So I don't know if that thing is not calling. It's calling. So why is my suction so flipping low? Yeah, that's not good, you know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be letting through. You can see it torn, turning there. Now I gotta get a high side gauge on there and see where our high side's at. I threw a pound of refrigerant in it. As you can see, it's not shutting off. It's negative five. We're running 155 on the head pressure. That's coming out after the filter dryer, after the solenoid. So we're getting pressure down to the TXV, but it's not coming back up. It appears to me the TXV is malfunctioning and just not letting it come back up. It's, I just find it hard to believe all these things happen at once, but you know, things accumulate at times. Why it's not shutting off. My other gauge actually showed it was shutting off around zero, maybe a little negative. Kinda not real impressed with that. I did bleed the gauges out ahead of time, so I didn't suck any air in. We've got, we got some issues here. What I'm gonna do is go down there and jump that fan so that it runs. I find it hard to believe we've got all these issues. I mean, the box is warm. We're on an extremely cold day. You know, it could be, you know, obviously the switch hasn't closed. 35, we're right in that ballpark where it should be at. In theory, it should have closed. That suction will come up if that fan was running. I don't really wanna change the TXV unless we have to, unless there's truly a problem with it. So I'm gonna go down there and jump that and see what we get. I went through and double checked a few things because I never can remember what wires what. So I keep a picture of schematics and this is the schematic for the one we're working on. I pulled up the schematic of a newer current one so I knew what was what. Black's fan, Brown's X and R's uh, N, which is kind of your common. Whereas here blue was and red here went to your X. So X is brown here. So I kind of had that wrong. Now that I jumped it with the jumper right there and it didn't run the fan, I have a feeling with all those little fuses up there, one of them's blown because we had one of those fan uh, wires burnt like we did. So let's go up there and see what we got. I about guarantee we got a fan wire or a fan fuse that's blown. Also, you can see that it's feeding really well through. That is really cold right here. So there's no reason why it shouldn't be calling on its own. So let's go up there and double check that. And guess what? Right here it's labeled evap, which you can see. It's kind of scary the way they got this. It's all kind of hem hogged. 213, so that fuse is open. Let's go ahead and make sure everything's dead. Kind of make sure that uh, it's okay to pull that out. Let's get some stray voltages there. Let's see what we got there on that one yeah so let's go ahead and pull that out of there uh, and get that replaced there's one actually over here to the side that's a 15 that's all looks like 14 gauge or better so might be able to swap it with that one there if it's still good they're just using that as a dummy terminal it says main but it's not a main no more save me from going and finding another fuse but you can tell like i said in the beginning you can tell they've had several different fuses replaced over the years the uh that's a 15, that's a 15. So yeah, let's get that yanked out of there. I got my fuse puller in my nicer bag. So we're just gonna cheat because we're not gonna keep that fuse anyway. There we go. Let's see what they had in there before. 15 amps, so good. Let's go ahead and get that other one out of there. We got it in there. These are those ones that have that little itty bitty piece there at the top where it just gets the very tip top of it. Which I don't even know if I've got those with that little thing on it or not. So let's go ahead and get that on. Let's see if we can get the meter. It's the only downside of that magnet. So that magnet just grabs a hold of everything. Let's see how our amp is, amp draw is now. Let's that one there. 2.5 amps sounds about like uh, the evaporator fans so we're good there those fans should be running I bet uh, that might help out our uh, defrost termination now huh 
because that's the power leg going down to it. I wasn't getting any power back up. So everything should be jimmy jang jang dangle here. So let's throw it into a defrost here real quick and see if it kicks immediately out. Boom, it kicked in, but I don't know if I heard it kick out or not. Okay, let's see this thing pump down or not. Yeah, it's not really what I wanted. As you can see, it went all the way down to negative five and back up to zero. What happens is you screw with that and you're gonna have problems with it not pumping down all the way and it's gonna short cycle on, on, off, on and off. The compressor valves are starting to go out or we've got leaking going through the solenoids. Unfortunately, these are the little things as time goes on, you're gonna to learn to have to ignore. Just things aren't ever gonna be perfect. And uh, it's working, so that's all they care about. So let's just go ahead and watch it for a minute. It should kick out a defrost pretty quick. I'm feeling a little bit uh, in a hurry to get done here because we got things going on. We're gonna jump in to X, make sure it kicks out. So let's go ahead and kill power real quick. Let's go ahead and do it from here to there. Flip it on, it should kick right out. Which, that's it. Yeah, see it didn't click when I rotated it. So it's done. Let's go ahead and shut that back off. Don't wanna short nothing out when I pull it off. It's three phase, it ain't great on it, but it'll work. I hate that because we're coming real close up on a defrost here right away and we're not going to need it. So we're just going to go ahead and skip it. Let's go through this defrost. Kick out of it. There we go. Let's move this back up to 40. I'm going to go up to 45 because they had it at 50 before. And now let's go ahead and watch this and see if we can get those fans running like it should be. Suction pressure looks a lot better there, don't it? Fans make a difference. Imagine that, right? Uh, that's why I'm glad I didn't add very much. I only added a pound, which isn't gonna hurt anything. I can about guarantee you with all the little flare fittings and stuff that we got on this thing, it's probably leaked that much easily out. Let's check that uh, fuse again. 2.4, so we are running those fans down there, obviously. We could notate that there on the panel so that we have that for later. There we go. So let's go ahead and watch this for a touch. Let's see how our sight glass looks, which looks to me like we're nice and solid there. Let's see how we're bypassing. We got warmth coming in the top. Not so much on the other side. We'd have to put a clamp on to most likely feel the difference because even though that is letting hot gas through on the headmaster control here. It's not like it's 100% bypass. It's a meter to mount. Pressure doesn't take a lot. Pressure doesn't mean uh, capacity. So to get the pressure up, we just got to get, you know, a meter to mount coming through there to keep the pressure up. Still got that cold liquid coming through on the other side out of the evaporator. With our head pressure up there around 160-ish area, it seems to be about accurate for what we got. Like I said, what we had here, the suction pressure was super low because the fan wasn't running. I should have caught that a little quicker, especially being it had a little bit of a brown mark there. But we're all human and we all kind of miss things. Okay, boys and girls, we got it. So it's dropping in temperature in here. So anyhow, guys, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Check me out on Instagram if you want to see more videos like this. Hit the uh, link that I've got at the top there for a list of other refrigeration videos or there's plenty of other playlists you guys can check out. Till next time, we will catch you guys on the next one. Later.